Hi guys, welcome to our next video on coding with Python. So the learning goal for this video is that by the end you'll be able to understand why iterative constructs are used in programming. Now if you remember back a few videos ago we were talking about the different kind of constructs that programming has and we talked initially we've investigated the sequence construct which means that each item of code or each line is basically executed one after the other one command followed by the next command followed by the next command we then have recently explored the selection which gives the capacity for the programming to split down positive paths so in this case on our little image here the program can choose to go to now from Digital, it can either go to CodeVale or Ram Road. It can't go to both, it goes to one or the other, and they run along their respective tracks or paths until they meet up again at OS Hills. So they're the two constructs we've had now. We have one last construct. Well, we have the next construct we're going to look at in this lesson. So this construct is called iteration. Pretty much up until now, what we've been doing on the computers is pretty useless. Um, it kind of makes them useless objects. Where we have to type in every single line of code and the computer executes each line of code, because it takes so long to type each line of code, it's really a waste of time. So the real power of computers is in its speed. And whilst it takes a while for us to type those lines, they can execute it very quickly. So if we can set up a computer that does a set task over and over and over again until we tell it to stop, we're going to use that speed. Remember back to our friend who has lost his, ca his car, can't find his car after the movies, and we had the robotic version of him going around to every single car to see whether or not that car was his car. Now, that's really slow and painful as a human being, but if that robot can move at the speed of light, it would do it really, really quickly. So that's a lot of what iteration is about, is that we're repeating the same set of instructions with a slight change each time, but we're really leveraging the speed of the computers to, to make those instructions um, run really, really fast. So basically, the, any kind of looping in program when it loops back and repeats steps is called iteration or repetition. And in program we have two different types of iteration. We have what we call a um, definite iteration and we have an indefinite iteration. So it all comes down to the idea of how many times you are looping. So a definite iteration, before you start the loop, it knows how many times, a set number of times, that this loop's going to occur. So if you're going to have a loop occur three times, and you know it's going to be three times, then you're going to use definite iteration. It's aware of it. Um, for example, if you're walking up 12 flights of steps, you know that for 12 times, you're going to have to lift your foot up and move up to the next step. Radio. So we actually know the set number of times you're going to repeat that loop. And we'll, we'll look into this loop first. And in Python, that's actually using a for command. So they're for loops. But we'll learn that information a bit further on in the next couple of lessons. The other type of iteration is an indefinite iteration. This one here. Now, it repeats until a specified condition occurs. So you don't know how long it's going to take. You don't know how many times it's going to take. You just keep doing it till something actually happens. Now, the example we can give you of that is eating dinner. So you sit down to eat dinner, and you will continue to shovel f food into your mouth until either you're full or until there's no food left. You don't know how many mouthfuls it's going to take. You don't know how many times you need to lift your fork and your knife and cut the food and put it in your mouth. You have no idea of that. You just have to meet the condition of you either being full or that there's no food left. Now, in Python, we use while loops to actually create our indefinite iterations. So there's so two types, definite iterations and indefinite iterations. And we're going to explore those over the next week or two. Now, both loops have, both types of loops, the indefinite and the definite loops, have the exact same kind of structure. 
you have an initialization of the code of a control. So this control is normally a value or a value variable. Anyhow, you test step two, you test that code, that control against a stopping condition. So is this situation meeting the condition? If it hasn't met the stopping condition, then you execute the body of the loop, which is this part here in three, executing the body of the loop. Now that's the part that gets repeated over and over again. And this can be huge. This can be hundreds of lines, or it can be one line. So, um, but this is what execute. This is what gets repeated. Once you've actually done that first time through, the first step through the body, you then update the value of the control. Radio. Then you test, then you repeat two to four. So you then test the control again. Exec if it's not, if it hasn't met the stopping condition, you execute the body, then you update the control. You test the control again, execute the body, update the control. It just goes round and round that until finally the control is the stopping condition and you leave. Now, let's talk about this in our walking up steps example. Initialize the control, number of steps. Um, testing the control is number of steps, which is currently zero, um, against um, is it equal to 12? No. So execute the, st um, the body, step up once, update the control. So we've stepped up one step, so the steps now becomes one. And we go back here, we repeat, test it. Is one equal to 12? No. Step up a step. Two. Does two equal 12? No. Step up a step, etc. until finally you reach 12. And does steps equals 12? Is 12 equal to 12? Yes. You've reached the stopping condition, you then exit. So that's what we're going to explore tomorrow in class. So we're going to look at how we use for loops and how we program them um, in Python. So after this slide, guys, there's a couple of um, questions. If you want to answer those, please, um, please, and we'll see you in next class. Bye.